Hi everyone, my name is Julia and I'll be introducing our group project. Our group chose an article by Linda B. Hayes and Carol M. Van Camp from the University of North Carolina at Wilmington, which was published in 2015. It was published in the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. We chose this article because it targeted the increase in physical activity, which was a goal that our group as a whole wanted to work on improving for ourselves. We thought that this study would be one that could be replicated well, as well as be significant to our everyday life and health goals. Um, the purpose of this current study was to evaluate the effects of an intervention package aimed at increasing the physical activity of school-age children during unstructured recess time. As a group, we wanted to choose a target that we could all easily participate in, as well as have a meaningful impact on our daily lives. We thought that this study met those goals, as well as utilized technology that was easy to incorporate into our daily routines. This article we chose utilized Fitbit trackers to record the steps taken during recess of elementary school students, and they utilized self-monitoring and reinforcement to increase the amount of steps taken during the recess period. Uh, the participants were eight typically developing third grade girls. Um, there were a total of 22 sessions throughout the study, each lasting 20 minutes. The sessions occurred between one and four times per week on the school playground during the regularly planned recess period, and whistles were used to signify the beginning and end of each session. The dependent variable in this study was the amount of time, uh, the amount of steps taken, which was recorded by the Fitbit tracker uh, the participants wore. When the session was over, the participants would bring their Fitbits to the table and have step totals recorded during the baseline conditions in which the Fitbit Fitbit screens um, on the trackers were covered, so they didn't know how many steps they were getting initially during the baseline session. During the intervention phase of this study, the participants could see their Fitbit screens, which allowed for self-monitoring, and the participants were expected to hit a 10% increase um, as the initial phase, um, followed then by a 20%, 30%, and 40% increase in order to gain access to reinforcement and powerful reinforcement was determined by uh, conducting preference assessments for each participant. At the end of each session, the participants received feedback, whether they met their step goal or they missed their step goal, and the results of this study showed that the intervention was successful for increasing the step count for participants, though not all of the participants met the criterion for each phase. And the reliability data was collected by having participants wear a secondary Fitbit, um, and as a group, we tried to replicate this aspect of the study by taking additional uh, step data with uh, a smartphone tracking app. So we were able to wear our Fitbits as well as track additional um, data on our smartphones. As a group, we really tried to adhere to the original study as closely as possible, utilizing similar intervention materials such as the Fitbit, um, a secondary form of tracking, as well as adhering to the type of data collection system that they used, um, and in terms of graphing, we graphed ours in a changing criterion graph as well, so you were able to see each um, phase of the intervention from baseline all the way to the highest increase. Um, our study closely mirrored the original, and we thought that our intervention materials and our data collection and overall um, matched up pretty closely. There were some things that we did have to change in terms of session lengths and um, percent increases um, were a little different, but we tried our best to adhere to the study as much as possible. Um, this study really sought to improve physical fitness um, for the participants, which ultimately is a goal that I think any educator or person who works with children um, can get behind as well as um, the individuals in our group. We really thought that was an important um, aspect of this study, and which, which is the reason why we chose it. Um, it also utilized technology, which was easy to implement and could be something that we could uh, use with our future learners or students, whether we're in a center or working in a school. It's something that um, everybody can work to improve in terms of physical fitness and health, so it was a goal that we all agreed was important. And this study sought to improve the physical fitness of the participants, and it utilized an intervention that could potentially make a realistic and achievable goal um, and impact on the lives of the participants. Hi everyone, my name is Julia, and I'm going to be going over my personal data for our group project. 
Um, I'll start by going over the data average and range for the steps that I collected. Um, to start off with, the data average for the step count I collected was 7,988 steps, and the range for my data was 5,425 steps to 11,345 steps. So as you can see on my graph, hold it up, uh, there was quite a big range um, in the steps that I collected. Um, so as you can see on my graph, uh, the step count progressed at a pretty stable rate um, for the duration of the project. And the changing criterion graph that we use for our project depicts the criteria um, increase uh, from 10% to 20% to 30%. And our baseline uh, was collected to start with. And this type of graph is what was used in the original study, and we were trying to replicate it uh, as closely as possible. Uh, the graph depicts on the y-axis uh, the amount of steps, and on the x-axis it's the number of sessions. Um, so baseline data was collected until we had a stable range, so not everybody in our group had the same amount of baseline data points. Um, for my baseline, I had one, two, three, four, five points, um, and it lasted for five days. Uh, so this was the first phase of our intervention, and this was similar to what the original study had done, and the baseline phase was simply collecting data for the duration of the time period that we had decided on, and we kind of got a sense of where we were starting at in terms of our uh, daily step uh, count without any type of um, intervention step increase. Um, so my data for the first phase with a 10% increase uh, was slightly variable. So um, on the first two data points, I did not meet criteria. And on the last uh, two that I, I did, so those were the last two days that uh, data was collected. Um, and so the whole phase lasted four days in total. Um, the second phase, which was the 20% increase, um, I was successful in meeting the criteria again on the last two days. So in total, um, for the 20% increase, it was one, two, three, four days as well. Um, on the last phase, which was the 30% increase, this was my longest um, phase. So if you can see on the graph there, it took me the longest amount of time um, to hit that increase. It was also the largest increase. Um, so it lasted six days and my criterion was met on the last two days of that phase as well. Um, in order for myself and the group members to move on to our next phase, we had to meet um, our criterion for a minimum of two days. Um, so I found that some days were definitely easier than others to meet criteria. Um, I'm a school teacher, so typically I'm up and moving around for most of my day. Um, so on days that were pretty typical in terms of being at work, um, the days were a lot easier to get those steps in. On more sedentary days or days where it was out of my routine, it was a lot tougher to get those steps in. And as the increases kept getting larger, um, I tried to be more mindful of trying to get those steps in since um, every phase there was a percentage increase of our steps uh, that was necessary to meet criteria. Um, so I thought that it was pretty simple, the devices that we used to track our steps. I used a Fitbit tracker, so I just wore it on my wrist um, like a watch. And it was pretty simple to keep track of my steps that way. And then at the end of each um, time period when we were done recording, I would input my total step count for that day into a Google Doc that our group created. Um, so that was really, really easy to keep track of all of our steps. Um, it was super simple, just log into Google Docs and input our steps for the day. Um, Overall, I thought that data collection was fairly simple and the resources such as Google Docs and the Fitbits or some people used Apple Watches uh, to record the steps really helped uh, keep my data organized and I was able to see a progression and kind of check in to make sure that I was hitting those step goals so it was easy to um, read the data and make sure that everything was progressing as it should um, and working collaboratively with my group. We communicated frequently. Um, we had meetings during the week to make sure that we were all kind of on track and kind of if there were any questions or concerns, we were able to check in with each other. And it was nice to be able to see all the data together to kind of see where everyone else was at in terms of their steps and how they were progressing. And the changing criterion graph really let us see um, the phase changes um, and see how long it took us to hit those step goals, as well as um, where we were in terms of as a group if we were all hitting our steps or not and similar to the project uh, that might not have always been the case but we tried to replicate um, our project collaboratively as much as we could. 
Hi, my name is Caitlin Van Adder, and today I'm going to be discussing our study and the literature that supports it. So our study was increasing physical activity of children during school recess. It um, had six typically developed third grade girls. It followed them for 22 sessions that were 20 minutes long during recess. Um, their number of steps were recorded. Um, during physical activity, such as playing basketball, tag, things like that. Um, there was a baseline that had no reinforcement and they wore pedometers and it was covered up. They were encouraged to increase their steps by 10% intervals and they moved on from each uh, percent when they hit two consecutive days. For the reinforcement, they were given tangible objects such as toys or crafts, and it was in A, B, A experimental design. So here is the um, results of, our, of the um, study. So increased um, steps were found during the intervention phase. Five of them reached the 40% and only one of them reached the 30. There was um, a functional relationship that was found between um, uh, the, uh, tangible reinforcement and increase in um, steps. So therefore it was a, an effective intervention. Um, as you can see by the graph, there's the baseline the intervention and the return to the baseline. There was an increase in the intervention for most of them. The limitations include that there have been some lost data due to sinking, and you can see that during the intervention phase. Um, it also showed that some peer presence may increase the physical activity and not necessarily the reinforcements themselves, and there were time constraints. Uh, some literature that supports this study um, is increasing physical activity through self-monitoring and feedback. So in this study, there was self-monitoring and feedback used as reinforcements to increase the number of steps in four healthy, non-obese um, uh, adults. So their, um, their steps were recorded using a pedometer. Uh, pedometer. Um, it was an ABA uh, reversal experimental design they were doing a daily self-monitoring uh, during like the last study during it, uh, the baseline, it had the pedometer covered. Um, in the um, intervention, they were encouraged by the experimenter. So what happened was the number of steps had increased during the intervention phase, um, then decreased when they went back to the the baseline phase. The self-monitoring, goal setting, and feedback was deemed effective in three out of the four adults. So they <laughs> increased their number of steps when they were aware and were given feedback and they um, monitored their own um, physical activity. So uh, limitations of this study include some of them had planned days off, so they didn't do the physical activity during those days. There was a lack of analysis of the intervention package, so that means like the goal setting, um, feedback, and monitoring uh, was the package. So let's say that the goal setting and the feedback were only two um, in a package that wasn't compared to another two in a package. Um, also, they were unsure of how it affected the overall health and they did not do any um, extra tests to see how it did. Another study is maintaining high activity levels in uh, sedentary adults with reinforcement thinning schedule. So in this study, there were 77 sedentary adults. Um, it focused on reinforcement thinning and uh, on increasing the number of steps in these adults. So after the baseline was achieved, they split into two groups. Um, there was a non-tangible reinforcement contingent with exercise and um, a monitoring plus reinforcement thinning group. So the reinforcement thinning group condition um, decreased reinforcements over time. 
to assess if increase of steps. Um, so basically, they assessed if the increases in step um, were maintained with the decrease in reinforcement. The reinforcement for um, both groups was they would draw prizes that were ranging from one dollar to a hundred dollar um, in value, and they would earn bonus drawings uh, for if they exceeded the amount of steps that they were required for four or two to four days. So the non-tangible monitoring group was found, um, or the non-tangible monitoring group would then earn five dollars in a gift certificate and encouragement during every five or during every meeting they held with the other people. Um, and the reinforcement thinning group would receive $5 certificates only when they reached 10,000 steps or more for a four day period. If they didn't get that, then it was reset. Um, so what were the results? The reinforcement thinning group increased the number of steps to receive tangible reinforcement. So um, that was higher than the non-tangible monitoring group. So the participants would work um, the reinforcement thinning group would would work harder to increase their steps for the reinforcement. The participants would work for a lower reinforcement they found when the present was um, opposed to nothing. So when there wasn't anything, um, they worked harder to get something, if that makes sense. So limitations of this um, study were, it was very time intensive, they weren't sure about the generaliz generalization from uh, different areas, different populations, and they did not consider other health um, concerns like blood pressure or um, any other health condition. Our next one was using self-determination theory to promote physical activity and weight control, a, random, a randomized control trial in women. So this focused um, on intrinsic versus extrinsic motiv motivations and the need um, for higher intrinsic motivation to maintain a healthy lifestyle and behavior outcomes. It was based around 239 women who were divided into two groups, an experimental group that was provided encouragement, um, education, knowledge, stress management, self-care courses, um, support from group members and staff, and then the other group, the control group, who received minimal supports. So in this study, there was a greater support, or the greater support would increase the amount of exercise and weight loss. It was found that um, they would increase the steps in the groups with more education and support. They had a higher level of intrinsic motivation and higher level to exercise and higher level to lose weight when they had that support from the other members and the education and know about a healthy lifestyle. Um, some limitations of this study included a lack of baseline uh, for the exercise, a lack of economical and economical evaluation to see if that affected um, the intrinsic value of exercise. So what does that mean for our <laughs> study? Now here are our five graphs and as you can see we um, the majority of us had an increase over time and in the studies that support our literate or our study the literature it basically showed that um reinforcements increased the intrinsic um need and want to exercise so over time during the baseline we would um start lower and then slowly increase upward when we were more aware of our um our steps we did tend to increase um there are some variabilities with some of us um and that's because there were different uh variables between um each of us in our daily <laughs> lives um but again uh the literature supports that 
an increase in reinforcement and support increases the intrinsic um, motivation to increase uh, exercise and steps. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Van Adder and I am going to be going over my results today for our group project. Um, as you can see, this is my data table uh, of my results. So for our um, study, we had 20 sessions that were measuring the number of steps per session. Um, I had a range of steps from 5,064 to 9,073 steps. My average amount of steps was 7,487. And in my baseline phase, I had five sessions. In my next uh, phase, which was 10% increase, I had four sessions. Then I went on to have six sessions in my 20% increase and five sessions for my 30% increase. Here is a picture of my graph. As you can see in baseline, I started at 5,000 and I increased to about 7,000. For my 10% increase, I jumped up to about 9,000, dipped down and then came back up to about eight. Uh, for my 20%, about 8,200, then slowly dipped down, and then came back up to around 8,000. Then for my 30%, um, 8,300, dipping down, and then coming back to around 8,200. So the overall trend of my um, graph, uh, there's an increase, a slight increase from where I started to where I ended. Uh, there's a moderate level of variability in my um, in my graph and my data because it, it wasn't a very steady, <laughs> um, stable uh, increasing. It, it was kind of all over the place. Um, it's also a moderate to high level of number of steps. So. <laughs> Reading my my um, graph, just looking at it, how I interpret it is that in the beginning I was pretty um, stable as far as going upward, increasing my number of steps. I think I went a little far um, in the ten percent. I I really did uh, think about the number of steps, and that's where you got the nine thousand. But then I, I wasn't really aware after that point and dipping. And so then I fell and then came back up. Um, and the 20%, I did start off higher and then I kind of fell back again, but then realized, okay, I need to start looking at my steps again and then increased. And the 30% is, is similar to that. Although the 30%, um, three of my uh, sessions did go below um, the 30 percent and I think I hit a plateau at that point um, I was I mean I'm used to taking a number of steps during the day and breaking that habit is hard um, when I looked at averages um, by phases they actually all were pretty much very similar similar in in numbers uh, so what does that mean I think in the beginning, I was really aware of what the steps I was taking and really um, aware of the reinforcements. Only thing is, is I don't think that the um, motivators were as big uh, for me as it was for the rest of the, the team. I mean, coffee and dinner are big motivators, but not enough to really increase the amount of exercise and steps um, for me. Also, um, I think one of my limitations in this study was that we did it from nine to five, the time frame, and I work from eight to four with 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. with the majority of my steps being in the morning. Um, before nine so <laughs> I think I may have lost some steps in that time um, but yeah overall there was 
an increase. It wasn't a steady increase and it wasn't necessarily stable, but there was an increase in steps. I think I definitely need a stronger motivator if I want to increase past the 30%. I think since um, this uh, study, since we've finished getting our results, I think I've definitely, definitely decreased my steps again because I'm not as aware and I do not have the reinforcement like before. I also think that um, the reinforcement would have to be bigger, but it also have to be, I'd have to have a higher need in myself to want to do better and increase um, my steps and exercise for, for me to do that. Hi everyone, my name is Jillian and I am going to be discussing the results of this group project and what my graph looks like. So just as a recap, what we were doing for our replication study is that we were tracking our steps we were taking from physical activity throughout the day. And based on how many steps we had, we then calculated um, percent increases by 10, 20, 30, and 40. And based on how many steps we got, we would be moving out of a certain phase and into the next one with a higher step goal. So this is my graph. We did a changing criterion um, design replication, and so our graph reflects a changing criterion graph. And as you can see um, on my graph, I only have listed 10%, 20%, and 30%, and that's because for me personally, I was never able to move out of the phase of the 30% increase and move on to 40% increase. So I begin with baseline. And my data is not very consistent, as you can see from just looking at my graph. My steps ranged anywhere from between just above 4,000 to right at 10,000 steps in one day. And there was not a pattern to how many steps I had, nor was there much consistency. And because of that, I was unfortunately not able to move out of 30%, and I was never able to get a 40% goal because I never actually hit my 30% goal. So as you can see from the graph, we have a changing criterion design. So we began with baseline and then we have each of our phases blocked off here. And then we have each of the criterion bars shown. So where each of the horizontal bars are located, that was my goal for that phase. So as you can see for 10% increase, I was actually above my goal. For 20% increase, I was also above my goal for two days. And then for 30% increase, I really never even came close to my goal while I was in that phase. So when I was in my 20% increase phase, I did hit my 30% goal, but I wasn't in that phase yet. So once I was in 30% increase, I really didn't come anywhere near that stuff goal. And my data is very inconsistent, which I personally think is very accurate for my life. Um, I'm a teacher, so I'm up and down all throughout the day. There's no pattern to the steps I take. Um, there's no consistency with where I'm at in the building during my job and what I'm doing at home. So it makes sense for me that on certain days my steps would be really low and then on certain days they would be high. And it was personally a struggle for me to hit my step goals once I got up into the 30% increase because my step goal for a 30% increase was right at 10,000. And for me, that's just um, something that's not very feasible for me to hit even as being a teacher and walking around and being on my feet all day and even being active at home. It was just something that, um, you know, was obviously hard for me to do and something that I did not hit and that's okay because everybody in our group has different results and we all have different data and even with this replication project it just goes to show that you know the data is going to be variable and everyone's data is going to look different but we all stuck to the same phases but we each had different step goals so for me Personally, I remained in 30% and if this was something that I was going to continue to do, I would probably still always remain in 30%. It would probably be a rare occurrence for me to hit my 30% goal two days in a row so then I would be able to move on to 40% step increase. Um, 
So overall, I am not surprised by my, my results. I think that the graph as a visual representation, you can see that my data is all over the place and it's not consistent. And that's very true for the reality of my life and my situation and the reality of my activity level. I really enjoyed this project and I really enjoyed reflecting on my physical activity and setting goals for myself and either meeting them or realizing that the goals aren't always attainable. So I'm going to be discussing some of the limitations of this project. And overall, our group and our project went really smoothly. We worked really well together and we didn't really encounter too many issues, although along the way there were some things that were more challenging than others. I think the first thing that everybody in our group found to be the most challenging or to be probably the top rated limitation was the fact that the study that we chose was kind of hard for us to replicate. Um, and that was because we chose a study that was conducted with little kids during recess time and it was calculating their steps and how many steps they would take during recess and their step goals throughout the day and that kind of thing. Um, what we ran into is obviously we're all working adults and while we all are active throughout the day, we're not quite as active as little kids who are running around at recess. So that was kind of challenging for us to figure out, um, you know, naturally in our environment if we really are going to hit the step amounts that are, you know, on the same level as that of the study. And we knew that our results weren't, you know, meant to be the same as the study. We were just going to replicate you know, the way the study was conducted as a whole. But I think a limitation for us was realizing, you know, it's not going to be the same. And, you know, I, that's the was kind of the point of this whole project. But for us to overcome, you know, that obstacle of knowing that our results aren't going to be the same, that's the whole point of this project and that it's okay. There were often times where we would meet and we would have group meetings and we would be discussing, you know, hey, I'm not hitting my step goals. It's not realistic for me today. It's not realistic for me this week. Um, and I think that was probably a limitation, you know, talking about how it's not going to be the same and being okay with that and understanding that, you know, what we're doing is not exactly going to mimic the study. And while we are replicating it, we're doing it to our best ability. Things aren't always going to line up and be the exact same. Um, you know, our group is very hardworking and, you know, I think we're all perfectionists. So I think that was kind of a limitation for us that we did overcome and it did end up turning into a positive in the end. Um, I think another limitation to this project is that you know, we're all online distance learners, so we're all, you know, in different states, and while we are in the same time zone, you know, there's five people in a group, and we're all working with conflicting schedules in different times when we're available, so while most of the time when we met for our group meetings, you know, everyone was pretty much able to be there, but there were times when you know, certain people couldn't make it just because, you know, that's a conflict and there's not much that we can do about that. Um, you know, for example, our presentation, we're not able to sit in front of our professor just because we have scheduling conflicts. Um, you know, so I think that's a limitation that is also, you know, has turned into a positive because you have to work as a team. You learn, you know, how to give and take a little bit and how to reciprocate favors, you know, if one person's not able to make it to a group meeting, then we would take notes and post our notes on our shared Google Doc, um, just so everyone could be on the same page. And I think that really helped us, um, you know, make sure we're all communicating and we're all, um, you know, consistent with what we're doing for the group. Um, but that, I think, was definitely a limitation, having to communicate with people who are all on different schedules, all have different lives, and who, you know, work different jobs and are in different states, um, you know, but we did do it, and I think that our group did a really great job of that as well. And I think the final limitation um, of this project kind of ties into the first aspect I was talking about, um, you know, how the studies aren't going to be able to be replicated exactly, and I know, you know, that's the whole gist of 
um, this project as a whole. But with that, it was challenging to find a study that we would be able to do and that was going to be feasible for five people. Again, I mean, this kind of ties in with the other two limitations I discussed. Um, you know, you have a group of people with different schedules, different things going on, different home lives, different work lives. And to find a study that fell within the criteria of, you know, what we are supposed to find and something that was going to be feasible for us all to do was very challenging. Um, the study that we ended up choosing, you know, it worked out well for, for everybody. But I remember in the beginning stages, we were all really struggling. All of us were searching for hours for a study to do. And it's not that the studies weren't out there. It was finding something that the entire group was going to be able to do and that we were going to be able to replicate at least the five of us consistently, you know, to make sure that our data was valid and that, you know, we had some accurate reliability data. Um, you know, so when we did settle on the study that we chose, you know, we were able to identify how we were all going to track our steps. And, you know, luckily, we all either had an Apple Watch or some other type of fitness watch or tracker that we would all be able to use to calculate our steps. But um, I think that was probably a limitation, just finding a study that was feasible for everybody in the group to replicate to make sure that our data was going to stay consistent and that we were following the replication of the study as closely as possible. Um, you know, but in the end it worked out really well and we were able to come together as a team and, you know, we were able to overcome these limitations, we were able to overcome these barriers and um, it just proves how strong of a group and of a team we really are in the end. Thank you. I will be discussing the method, methods of our study. The participants of our study were Julia, Jill, Ashley, Jennifer, and Caitlin. The study was occurring, or data was collected during the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in whatever setting the participant was in. The materials needed for this study are a step tracker, which participants used an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, but others would be sufficient, a Google Doc to record your data, device covers for the baseline phase, and any tangible reinforcers. The behavior evaluated was physical activity, which is defined as any movement of the legs and feet that involves feet making repeated contact with the ground, which results in the individual increasing their distance from the starting point. Data collection system used was to collect frequency data that, is rec that was recorded, indicating the number of steps that were taken. The study w used the changing criterion design um, for both the baseline and intervention conditions. Data was collected through the step, step trackers and documented on a Google Doc. Back baseline data was recorded as was collected as a number of steps on a fitness tracker and recorded daily in the Google Doc. Baseline data was collected until a stable baseline was achieved. Each participant's step tracker was covered during the baseline condition with a device cover to not be able to see the number of steps that were taken. At the end of the baseline session, the covers were removed and the participants were able to record their steps during the intervention phase. For the intervention phase, each participant um, engaged in physical activity from the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The step goals for the changing criterion design were established based on the average number of baseline average number of steps taken during the baseline phase. Each criterion, the criterions were set at 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% of the baseline average. Each participant was able to progress to the next goal after achieving that criterion goal for two consecutive days. After all criterion goals were met, the participants maintained um, or continue to collect data for maintenance purposes. IOA data was collected by each, by each participant, um, by one participant each week. Um, and that data was collected using an application on a cell phone. The cell phone was worn on the opposite side of the body as the original fitness tracker. The IOA data was collected in the same document um, and 
the day it was on the day it was collected. Total count IOA was used by dividing um, the the smallest number of steps taken by the largest number of steps taken and converted to a percentage by multiplying by a hundred. Treatment integrity is determined or was determined by each participant in documenting the steps that were completed while they're while tracking their steps as well as as well as collecting their IOA percentage. All participants were provided feedback from each other to maintain the fidelity of this study. You can see this, the results of the study in which I participated in in the graph here. During the baseline phase, it took me four sessions in order to establish a stable baseline. The average, base, average number of steps taken during the baseline phase was 6,015. For criterion one of an increase of 10% from that baseline average, it took me three sessions to complete this. As you can see, the first session was much lower and the next two sessions was above that criterion line. The average number of steps taken during criterion one was 6,600. During criterion two, which is a 20% increase in the steps from the baseline average, it took me four sessions to complete that criterion. As you can see, the first session was above the criterion line. The second session dipped down below the criterion line. So in order to have two consecutive sessions, it took me two additional sessions um, for that criteria to receive or to achieve that goal. So the baseline or the average number of steps taken for criterion two was 7,860. For criterion three, which is a 30% increase from the baseline average, you can see it only took me two sessions to um, achieve that criterion goal with both sessions above that criterion line. The average number of steps taken for criterion three was 8,555. For criterion four, which is a 40% increase from that baseline average, it took me five sessions to complete this with, for the two consecutive days above that criterion level. As you can see, the first one, um, the first session was below that criterion line. Second session is actually above the criterion line. Third session is below, and then the fourth and fifth ses sessions are above that criterion line. Session six and seven were collected as maintenance for that for that criterion. The criterion average uh, for criteria, criterion four was 8,660 steps taken per day. The range of steps that were taken for my results was 5,199 steps as being the lowest and 9,104 steps being the highest. I'm Ashley Joseph and these are my results. So when I first read about this project, I was really excited because as a group we decided we wanted to do something with physical activity. And I was really excited about that because I'm always looking for more ways to get out and get active. But I found that my work schedule really interfered with trying to complete this study as we were supposed to. I think my biggest challenge with this project was actually getting the steps done. So we determined that we wanted to track our steps between the hours of nine to five. Well, between the hours of nine to five, I have a really odd work schedule. I see a client in the morning from about 8.30 to 12.30, three times a week, that's it. And I don't have any afternoon clients until four o'clock. So I've gotten into this really bad habit of seeing my client coming home, making my lunch and eating it, and then I take a nap for about two hours, which is actually, it's really bad actually. Um, but I've just gotten into this routine where that's what I do. And then I get up at 3.30, I see my next client from four till usually 7.30, and then I get home around eight, and that's when I go to the gym and like actually do stuff. So between the hours of nine to five, my schedule is just like totally weird and it did not vibe very well with this project because I simply could not get my steps done. Um, even when I, you know, tried to say that this project would hold me accountable and I would work really hard to do it, I just could not break myself out of this pattern of coming home and napping because on days where I really did put my steps in, 
I found myself to be very, very tired as I was leaving to go see my, my late night client. So it wasn't good either way. Um, as far as my results go, my baseline, which even that was a stretch because I tried really hard to get good numbers for my baseline. And then after that, it was just really hard to go above that because I think I was overshooting my baseline just to get good data. So my graph shows my baseline and then shows my three weeks of intervention where, as you can see, I think the highest I ended up going up was maybe like 15 or 17% when really we were trying to get up to 30% which I simply did not do. There were days that are really low. Um, I live in Pennsylvania and if you live here or if you read the news, we got hit with so many snowstorms that most of my clients canceled. And on a snow day, I don't know about you, but I don't like to do a whole lot of anything on snow days. So this one all the way at the bottom here was a snow day. <laughs> And I actually really tried that day to just get some steps in so that I could count it. Um, otherwise, it would have been at zero. Um, the biggest challenge for this study, as I said, was doing it. But one thing that I learned is that, you know, nobody else is going to do these steps for me. I really have to do it for myself and hold myself more accountable for what I'm doing when I'm supposed to be doing it. I think it was really interesting to work with a group on this project because we really all had to collaborate together, make deadlines, meet expectations, and we had to do it as a group, which can sometimes be difficult. Um, especially online, this was my first like long distance online group project. So I'm actually very pleased with my group and I think we did a really good job of replicating the study and learning the proper procedures on how to replicate it. Going through the checklists and the proposals, it was the first time I had ever done something like this. So I think it was a great learning experience for me. Even though, as you can tell, I did not <laughs> meet the milestones that we were supposed to, I really did try. And I think maybe next time if we were to do this again, I think I would put in 10% more effort just to make sure that I am trying to work as hard as I can to meet these expectations that we set. But with my work schedule, it just was not happening for me. Um, but overall, I think this was a great project. And even though I didn't meet the expectations that we were supposed to, I am still very proud of myself for getting up and doing the steps that I did because I think even that was like an overstretch from what I normally do. So overall, it was a great project and I'm proud of the work that we did as a team and proud of my results even though I didn't meet the expectations of the study. In conclusion, although this was a fairly simple study to replicate, it proved to be slightly difficult for some of us to replicate it in its entirety. Several factors contributed to the participants being unable to meet the exact replication of this study as previously stated. Overall, this was a great learning experience on why it's important to replicate research and gave us firsthand experience on the procedures to actually do so. We picked a study that helped us to become more accountable for ourselves and for our actions and at the same time, allowed us to become more active, which can be difficult, especially for working students. This project helped us to gain better insight on how to properly replicate research while at the same time working with colleagues towards a common goal. We were open-minded with each other and had a flow of ideas and an open dialogue, which really helped us to create a transparent conversation among all of the group members, which I think is why we were so successful as a team. In the end, we worked together for a common goal, and although some of us didn't exactly meet that goal, we learned the importance of collaboration and consultation as a team.